This is Gallery Church Online. Sorry there, bit out of puff. Just been trying to get my skates off. Okay. I haven't worn them for seven years. Um, welcome to Gallery Church. Whether you're completely new, you're welcome, so welcome. Or whether you've been a thousand times before, you're still welcome too. Um, my name's Ian, I'm one of the core leaders at the church, and I'm here to tell you about what's going on in the life of the church. So firstly, we have gallery dinners coming up this Wednesday. If you've never been to gallery dinners before, you've got to get yourself there. It's amazing, it's all done online with obvious COVID restrictions at the moment, um, but it's absolutely incredible. If you've never been to gallery dinners before and you've not got a gallery dinners leader, then please just drop us an email and we'll get you in touch with one so you can join as well. So we have Wild on the 12th of September for all you ladies out there. It's all happening on Zoom, it's all gonna be online, but it's gonna be an incredible event. So get yourselves to that, ladies. How'd you like your ham sliced? How'd you like your ham sliced? Anyone seen the new Waitrose van lately? Hmm. I thought that too. Speaking of ham, there's a ham in the Bible. Noah's kid. If you didn't know that, perhaps get yourself over to the Alpha course. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, we'd be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. Now, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. What an amazing course. Um, I just encourage every single one of you that if you've got anyone who's interested in that course to, to send them over to Alpha and maybe even go along and support them as well. I'm gonna move into a time of worship now. Um, it's amazing because we get to come together in a community and worship God. And uh, just a little thought on this is that maybe you feel like you're just in the mundane doing the same thing every day, day after day, the same process 
Maybe it's, it's just going to work and coming home and going to work and coming home. This a little bit reminds me of a, a story in the Bible uh, where the Israelites are actually walking around the walls of Jericho. God asks them to do this and then after the seventh time, the walls fall, they cave in and there's breakthrough and they break into the city. Well, sometimes God just is saying, just keep going. So it's a little bit like just keep going on with the process, on with the process and eventually something's gonna break and you're gonna see that breakthrough. Let's just move into a time of worship now. Um, if you're tuning in from home, sing along, the words will be on the screen. Should I ever need reminding? How could 
you've been to me. I count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west and I can feel the What an amazing time of worship. That was awesome. Um, I just want to pray now. I just pray, Lord, that you would just speak to every single person as we go into the word now, that you would challenge our hearts, that you would grow us as individuals. Um, let's hand over to Andy Waddams, our pastor of the church, who's bringing the word today. Hello, we're back from holiday. You know that thing where you wear a white t-shirt to show off your tan? I bought a blue one, so... Anyway, a lot of my pastor friends at the moment, friends, are talking and doing sermons called All In, ready for the new season. And I was like, yeah, okay, all right, all in. But actually, I thought on it a bit more and became more humble and thought, yeah, it's really helpful with these days that we've had, these difficult days, days without patterns, except perhaps for Joe Wicks and the Daily Briefing. Do you remember that? It's good to know that in some senses, the holidays are over and it's time to be all in. I know that not everyone is back at work, but um, it's definitely time for everybody to report back to spiritual duty. Now, do you ever get that thing where like, you've done nothing all day, like literally nothing, the kind of day where Netflix says, are you still watching? That kind of day. And at the end of that day, you're exhausted inexplicably somehow you're tired from not moving or thinking all day well i'm pooped i'm beat man's wrecked i'm about ready for bed gonna lie down do nothing now like i've been doing all day for hours and hours how do we get so tired from doing nothing this is a little bit like what church can feel like at the moment this is a bit what our walk with God could feel like. We've got to get back into some serious rhythms, some heavenly habits, some praiseful patterns. We might not be able to meet for praise, but he is still worthy of our praise. He's still God, Lord, our Father. What are we going to do about that? Does our life still reflect that? It's time to be like those people who do yoga before 6 a.m. and feel amazing, or people who run before breakfast, 5K saying, it just gives me more energy. We've got to get our spiritual rhythms back. It's been a hard season. The framework of the day has disappeared and where we put our normal things that we do to keep our rhythms and health going, they're not there. Walking with the Lord in the cool of the day. Well, in England, there's lots of cool of the day, but not loads of walking with the Lord. Sunday worship times have disappeared. The togetherness, the vocal unheld back. Our rhythms with God are out of sync. I don't know how you've coped. I found it so hard. There's a couple of things at Gallery Church that can help. There is help at hand. One of them is Battlefront. It returns the early morning prayer meeting. Oh, not that, Andy. It's coming back and it's even earlier, but just for two days of the week. 6.30, Monday and Friday going forward. That's what we're going to be doing. Join us. Get some of your rhythms back. You can make one of those and have a weekly rhythm back. Also dinners, gallery dinners, keep meeting, connecting, talking about godly things, praying for people, praying, being prayed for, being blessed and talking about the things of God. Gallery dinners is a great place to do that and get some of your regular rhythms back, your spiritual rhythms back. It's time to move our relationship with God off the back burner. It should never be on there, but it gets pushed aside in times of busyness and um, trouble or more recently perhaps times of broken rhythms. It's not like a gym membership, unfortunately. You can't just sprinkle a bit of God on your life and expect it to work magic. 
You'll go only when you can, and only if it fits, and only if you feel like it. The gospel is totally supposed to be accessible for anybody, but it's never convenient. The gospel is supposed to be accessible, but it's never convenient. You can't be a disciple without a move from comfort to discomfort, without trusting God with your life, your calling. It's impossible to become more like Jesus. You can grow more like Christ or remain comfortable. Knowing Christ is freely available, but becoming like him is not convenient at all. It will cost you time, effort, money, sacrifice. You'll even be asked to lay down your life like Christ did. If you want to be a disciple, that is. Knowing Jesus as your saviour is one thing, but knowing him as your Lord and saviour is quite another. Giving him reign over your life and trusting him. Do we really do that? Do we ask him just to sprinkle magic on the end? C.S. Lewis says, God is the most important thing. He's either the most important thing in the world or of no consequence whatsoever. If he's not real, it doesn't even matter. If he is real, he's the most important thing in the world. We live in the life he gave us, in the place he created. It's really important. Not really to be put on the back burner. You can put what you want on your social media about this blessing and that blessing, but if you're not thanking the blesser, if you're not committed to the things the blesser is committed to, well, then he truly is on the back burner. I love God, but not his people, not church. Jesus loves the church. Jesus prays for the church. Jesus is committed to the church. The gospel is supposed to be accessible for everyone but it's never convenient. Leaving the comfort of heaven and heading to the cross is what Jesus did. And as disciples, we become more like him. It's not convenient. Let's reject the convenient gospel. No other gods but me. That's what God says in the Old Testament. It's still relevant for us today because it's in there and Jesus came to fulfill not to abolish. I don't know many people who are worshipping Zeus at the moment or Jupiter and asking them to bless their crops or bring rain or cause, for, cause fertility. Perhaps that's not how we're meant to understand it anymore, but it's still relevant. Is God a jealous God? No one but me. Yeah, he is actually, but not as we understand it. He's not like, have you been speaking to other gods? Let me see your phone. Let me see your phone. <laughs> Imagine if we had to show God our phone though. I said a couple of weeks ago that scripture's in there for a number of good reasons. One of them is equality, that we all know we're from the same father, that we're all equal. No matter how much somebody is worth, they're no better or more valuable than anyone else on the planet in the eyes of our heavenly father. We're all equal. Another thought I had around that was actually maybe it's so we know where to get help. Where to go and get our help. When my children head out, I'm a little bit neurotic, I'm a bit full on, and they roll their eyes a little bit. But I'm asking them all the questions. Have you got everything you need? Have you got any cash in case something goes wrong you need to pay? Have you got all the equipment you need perhaps for school? Have you got your mask if you're going on the train? And the big one is the phone. Have you got any data? Can I phone you? Can you phone me? It's the battery. Have you got enough battery? Are you charged? Have you still got one? Yes, Dad, we've got your number. And they have got my number. And they've got a few other numbers in their phone as well. But when they get into trouble, take Ellis for example, if he got into a situation, I want him to know, being his dad, that he can call me. And I want him to make sure he's got credit, and I make sure he's got credit, that he can call me and he can ask for help. He can tell me what's happening and I can come and help him. I do not want him to feel that he cannot contact me for help. And I wonder if God says, have no other gods except for me. God is saying, hey, I want to remind you that I am here as a heavenly father to help you. We've got some great things in our lives. We've got resources, amazing relationships and people, but when we're in trouble, God wants us not to forget his number. Call on him. 
your heavenly father, he wants to come. He wants to come and get you, maybe talk you through it. Maybe he just wants to advise you that it's gonna be okay. Call your heavenly father. He's even more diligent than I am and much less neurotic. Don't forget God's number. He keeps doing it in the Old Testament as well. He says, just to remind you, I am the God who pulled you from this scenario, helped your leaders in that scenario. I provided, I loved you, I protected you. Forget not his benefits. Build altars to God's goodness so we know where to go in times of need. That's a spiritual rhythm. Sunday when we gather and worship, we're building another altar in our psyche uh, and in our community of how good God is and how good he's been to us. When we're not meeting together, we get out of a spiritual sink and we must remember to continue to do such things. I know where my help comes from. In Jericho, we see patterns of trust and praise. He is a God who is with us in the difficult times. He was with the three Israelite men in the fire. Three men were thrown in and four were seen in there. He was with Daniel in the, in the lion's den. The Lord is a very present help in times of need, Psalm 46. It's not just for times of trouble though. It's actually always and forever. Oh, a classic Old Testament scenario. No, this is Jesus talking. Matthew 6, Sermon on the Mount. He says this in verse 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For pagans or people who don't know God like that, run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. <laughs> Imagine if I ran a restaurant already, strong imaginations at Gallery Church though. If I ran a restaurant and Gordon Ramsay came on staff very strong imaginations. And I thought, well, let's pop him in the kitchen. That's gonna be a good thing. And then he went to the kitchen, but I'm still gonna cook all the food. So I cook all the food in the kitchen. And as I get to the end of preparing a dish, I slide it over to Gordon and say, could you just stick some salt and pepper on that, please? Gordon Ramsay, world famous chef. Sometimes we do that with God. We're there preparing our lives and we slide it over to the giver of life and say, could you just put some magic seasoning on this? So life feels a bit tingly at times. Are we really seeking first God's kingdom like Jesus said? Or are we just preparing our home meals and asking a world-class chef to just add a little bit? Let's get God right in the middle of the kitchen, preparing, turning, showing, leading us in this thing called life. Let's actually put him first. Let's have no other gods before him, not even our own decisions and wisdom and intelligence. All that is vital but we can't make a God of it. God must be first. Do we suffer from something which I call the vanity of humanity? Now, in gallery dinners this week, there'll be a couple of questions about that in the material. The vanity of humanity. Are we God in our own lives or is God God? I commit my life to you, Lord. Or do we say, God, could you just commit to our plans? I love what Pastor Pete Worthington said a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely adore that. And in my early years as a Christian, you'd see me on my knees at the front of any worship time when this song came on. Take me, mold me, shape me. I can't remember the words now, that's how important it is. But you are the potter's hand. God's hand is shaping our lives. He knows what we're good for. He knows what we're good at. And we just gotta trust that he's the potter shaping us. It's a very pastoral message today, but I believe it's important that we do not become our own gods, but let God reign in our lives. The only book that you need to look at to see the current state of where you're at in your spiritual walk is not the Bible, but your diary. How much time, how busy have you been? How much have you sought first the kingdom of God? Yes, he's our saviour, but I don't want a church every time we have a worship time, everyone to be coming, Lord, you're my saviour again. Save me from the stuff that I've done. I want people who walk with God, follow what he asks them to do, who are anointed by him because they've bowed the knee and said, you are the Lord of my life. God can't mega use people being saved every week. He can use people who have said, you are my boss. You are the boss. I give my life to you. Tell me how to go. Let's give him lordship of our lives. Let's pray. Father, I pray that people would not be discouraged <laughs> by this message this morning, but encouraged 
Lord, that they wouldn't feel burdened, but by your spirit and your grace feel empowered and envisioned. Lord, your burden is light. Your yoke is easy, your burden is light. Lord, when we come into your things, when we seek first your kingdom, all the other things we strive for and need are added to us. Bless Gallery Church, bless everybody watching this today, Lord God, with your presence, the gift of your grace, Lord, and the power and strengthening and abilities of your Holy Spirit. Father, if someone's watching this for the first time today and thinking, you know, it's time for me to stop trying to run the whole life thing myself. I've got God in the kitchen and I'm just letting him do some seasoning at the end. Lord, I pray that they would give their lives to you as well. Jesus, you are good, you are great, and you are Lord of Gallery Church and Lord of my life. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. Great to be back. I'm hosting next week and we've got a guest speaker all the way from Berlin. But for now, back to Ian. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for a wonderful message uh, from our pastor um, today, God. I just want to uh, give every single person out there an opportunity to meet with, with Jesus today. So if that's you, you're sitting on your couch at home watching this and you feel actually something really resonated there, why don't you just follow me in this prayer? So, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you died for me, Father God. I pray, Jesus, that you would just show yourself in my life in some kind of way, Father God. Um, I want to walk with you. Lord, would you forgive me for the things that I've done wrong in the past and make me a new creation? In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've said that prayer this morning, firstly, amazing, wonderful, incredible, awesome. Um, but it doesn't stop there. We want to encourage you in your journey with Jesus this morning because that is a very bold step to take. So if you just jump onto our website and just click down here and the follow Jesus icon, um, you, we, we will be able to send you more resources and help you along in your journey. What an incredible decision. Well done. That brings us to the grand finale of our service today. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, we've loved having you along at Gallery Church today. Remember a few things for your diary. You've got gallery dinners this Wednesday. Get online, log on, check it out. If you've never been before, then drop us an email and we'll, we'll shoot you in the right direction. Um, we've also got Wild coming up on the 12th of September, Saturday the 12th, for all the ladies out there. So check that out too. I've been Ian, you've been amazing, and we've had a wonderful time this morning. And Jesus has been Jesus. This is Gallery Church Online. Goodbye. <laughs> what, please say? Please say? Yeah, that'll be in the outtake. In the outtake. In the outtake. This is Gallery Church Online. This is Gallery Church Online. Okay, I'm done there. Is that alright or...? I'm so out of breath. <laughs> of course. Um, bef no, hang on. So what we... Where is he? Who is he? No one knows. Head yourself over to Alpha this bit's... N oh, hang on. Should I do thickly sliced ham or Alpha first? Thickly sliced ham? Uh, no. How'd you like your ham sliced? Thickly sliced ham. Yeah, I think it's like this is Okay. Speaking of ham, speak, 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 speaking of ham. No, hang on, let's just do it one more time. Cool. Go Dermot, go Dermot. I don't know. Yeah, let's do that. So make sure you unbolt your doors.